I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church outside the baptistry. And today is the seventh day of our novena in preparation for the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Now, in the old Roman ritual, there is a blessing of crosses to be placed in fields, vineyards, etc., on the feast of the finding of the Holy Cross, which is May 3rd. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, Father. This isn't May. This is September. Why are we talking about the blessing of crosses to be done in May when it's September? Well, the reason is this. Just as in the fall we plant our bulbs to bloom in the spring, we might consider what seeds we're going to order for the winter and the spring. And we might be considering what trees we're going to plant or what bushes we're going to remove or whatever. But you also have to, well, you also have to consider um, where you're going to get the, uh, the crosses to be planted and then get them and where you're going to place them. And you're thinking, what are you talking about, Father? Well, let me explain. So there is a blessing of what we call harvest crosses. And, uh, well, we'll learn more about that in a moment from the Curé of ours, St. John Vianney. But let's take a look at the blessing itself. These are to be placed in fields, vineyards, etc., on the Feast of the Finding of the Holy Cross. And this is how the blessing goes. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, Father of all consolation and loving care, through the merit of the most bitter passion which thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, endured for us sinners on the wood of the cross, bless these crosses which thy faithful bring to set up in their gardens, vineyards, fields, and other places, and to the places where they are set up. May there never come the crash of hailstones, the onslaught of tornadoes, the rushing wind of storms, or any attack of the enemy, so that the fruits of these lands may grow ripe and be harvested to the honor of thy name by those who place their hope in the power of the Holy Cross of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with thee forever and ever. Amen. And there we have the uh, blessing to be used on crosses on the May 3rd. So, be thinking about next May 3rd. Get some crosses to plant in your garden. What kinds of crosses would you get? And then where would you like to plant them? And then bring them in to be blessed next May. I think that's our assignment. Well, let's hear a little bit more about what St. John Vianney calls harvest crosses. Blessed crosses are put in the fields or in open spaces in places where a crop will be harvested. The purpose of the blessing is to implore God not to turn his merciful eyes away from the fields where they are pl placed, but to spread his blessings there. That, however, is not all there is to planting crosses. It must be done with reverence, with faith, and above all, it must not be done in a state of sin. You may be quite sure that if you plant them with the right sentiments, God will bless your lands and preserve them from temporal harm. If your crosses do not produce the effect which you should expect from them, it is not difficult to imagine that it is because you went to plant them without faith and without religion. It is because when you were planting them, you did not perhaps say even an Our Father or a Hail Mary on your knees, or that if you did say your prayers, it was probably with one knee only on the ground. If that is the case, how do you expect God to bless your harvest? But when you find them again, that is indeed another abomination. Oh my God, in what a dreadful age do we live! When the Church instituted this holy ceremony, everyone longed for the happiness of placing these crosses in his field and behaved with utmost respect. When they were found, either during the reaping or the vintage, people bowed down to the earth to adore Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. And in that way they expressed their recognition of the fact that he had desired to bless and preserve their harvest. All with tears in their eyes kissed the sacred sign of our redemption, Alas, my God, that is, no, 
that it is no longer in that way that Christians recognize you. Instead of expressing your gratitude to God for having graciously blessed and preserved the fruits of the earth, do you not, rather, offer him an insult by laughing when you are kissing the cross? Is it not perhaps an act of derision, or rather of idolatry, to offer a handful of corn, as if you were incensing the person who is holding the cross? Carry on, unhappy sinners. God will punish you either in this world or in the next. Fathers of families, have I not been telling you for the past two years that when the time comes for the reaping, you should gather up all the crosses which are in your fields in order to save them from profanation? Have I not suggested to you to put them together in your barns, and when you have threshed your corn to burn them, lest they be profaned? If you have not done that, you are very much to blame, and you must not omit to mention it in confession. Alas, there is no counting all the horrible things which are done at the time of the harvest, or of the vintage, at those very times when God in his abundance and his love covers the earth with the gifts of his providence. Ungrateful, men seem, ungrateful man seems at that time to redouble his insults, and to multiply his crimes. How have you the impertinence to grumble if your harvests are short, because the hail or the frost have harmed some of them? Ah, much rather should you be very surprised that in spite of all your sins, God still wants you to give you the necessities of life and even more than is necessary, too. Oh, my God, how mean and blind man is. And there we have the words of Saint John Vianney, also known as the curé or pastor of ours. Our. Let us now pray our novena prayer and let us call to mind our intentions for this novena. Now you can print out a copy of the Novena Prayer in the description below this video. Let us call to mind our intentions for this Novena. And for all the intentions of all who are praying this Novena, let us offer them, commend them to God. And now let us sing the Vexilla Regis. Vexilla Regis pro deunt, fulget crucis mysterium, qua vita mortem bertulit, et morte vitam protulit. Que vulnerata lance, mucrone diro criminum, unos lavar et sordibus, Manavitundet sanguine. Impleta sunt que concinit, David fideli carmine, dicendo nationibus. Regna vita ligno Deus. Arbor decor et fugida. Ornata regis purpura. Electa digno stipite. Tam sancta membra tangere. Beata cuius brachis, precium pependit seculi, 
Statera bhakta corporis to lead que predam tartari. Now let us kneel for the sixth verse. O crux aves pesunica, hoc passionis tempore, pis adauge gratiam, reis que dele crimina. Vote fon salutis trinitas, collaudet omni spiritus, quibus crucis victoriam, largiris ade premium. Amen. In the prayer to Jesus crucified, to be said every day to obtain his holy love. Now, let us gaze upon the cross through the open gate. My crucified love and most sweet Jesus, I believe in thee and confess thee to be true Son of God and Savior of the world. I adore thee from the abyss of my misery and thank thee for the death which thou didst suffer to obtain for me the life of divine grace. O most faithful of all friends, O most loving of all fathers, O kindest of all masters, my beloved Redeemer, to thee I am indebted for my salvation for my soul, my body, and my whole self. Thou hast delivered me from hell. Through thee I have received the pardon of my sins. Through thee do I hope for paradise. But my ingratitude is so great that instead of loving thee after so many mercies and special endearments of love, I have only offended thee afresh. I confess that I deserve not to be allowed to love thee any more. But no, my Jesus, choose some other punishment for me, and not this. If I have despised thee up to this time, now I love thee, and I desire to love thee with all my heart. Thou knowest very well that without thy help I can do nothing. Since then thou doest command me to love thee, and dost offer me thy grace, provided I ask it in thy name, confiding in thy goodness and in the promise thou hast made me, saying, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, that I will do. I present myself poor as I am before the throne of thy mercy and by the merits of thy passion. I ask thee first to pardon all my sins of which I repent with all my soul because by them I have offended thee who art infinite goodness. Pardon me then and at the same time give me holy perseverance till death. Grant me also the gift of thy holy love. Ah, my Jesus, my hope, and my only love, my life, my treasure, my all, shed over my soul that light of truth and that fire of love which, which, thou, which thou didst come to bring into the world. Enlighten me to know every day better why thou shouldst be loved and to see the immense love thou hast shown me in suffering and dying for me. Ah, grant that the same love may be in me as that with which thy eternal Father loves thee. And as he is in thee and is one with thee, so may I, by means of a true love, be in thee, and by a perfect union of will become one with thee. Grant me then, O my Jesus, the grace of loving thee with all my affections, that I may love thee always and ever beg the grace to love thee, so that ending my life in thy love, I may come to love thee in heaven with a purer and more perfect love, never to cease loving thee, and to possess thee for all eternity. O Mother of beautiful love, most blessed Virgin, my advocate, my mother, my hope after Jesus, who art of all creatures the most loving toward God and desirest nothing but that he should be loved by all. Ah, for the love of this Son dying before thine eyes for my salvation, 
Pray for me and obtain for me the grace to love him always. And with all my heart, I ask it of thee, and from thee do I hope to obtain it. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, join me tomorrow for the eighth day in our novena, preparing for the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Please subscribe to this video channel. If you like the video, like it. If you want to, share it. If you think somebody might want to watch it. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.